So welcome to our fourth lecture on transition metal chemistry, complex chemistry, and coordination chemistry. In our last lecture, we were just talking about the way coordination compounds can start generating isomers. That is compounds with the same chemical formula, but are different materials. In chemistry, <coughs> we run into a wide variety of materials that qualify as isomers. That is compounds that have the same chemical formula, but are in fact different materials in some fashion. And we split isomers into two different groups. One, structural isomers, and the second, what are known as stereoisomers. The structural isomers are basically different compounds, that is, there's either different bonding or different arrangements or different linkages between the different isomers. That is, they are simply different materials which happen to have the same formulas. The stereoisomers are actually basically the same material, just somehow different. In coordination chemistry, we run into basically three different kinds of structural isomers. Linkage isomers, ionization isomers, and coordination isomers. In coordination isomers, you have all the same metal centers and all the same ligands, but there's a difference between which ligands are bonded to which metal centers. For example, you can make the two compounds, hexaamine, cobalt-3, hexacyanochromium-3, and the compound consisting of the complexes pentaamine cyanochromium-3 and amine pentacyanocobalt-3. Those two compounds exist. They have all the same ligands and metal centers, but who's bonded to who is different. You can also have ionization isomers. You can make the compound diamine dichloro platinum 4 bromide and the compound diamine dibromo platinum 4 chloride. And those two compounds again have all the same ligands and ions, but when you put them in solution, the first one, the bromides, end up wandering around as solution, the rest is the complex, and in the second one it is the chlorides that end up wandering around in solution while the rest is in the complex. And we've already talked somewhat about the linkage isomers where you have an ambidentate ligand that can bond through more than one of its atoms. And so we get the two, the nitro and nitrido, depending on whether the ligand is bonded through the nitrogen or through the oxygen. Stereoisomers, on the other hand, are actually basically the same compound. There's just something somehow different about them. All the bonding is basically the same. What's different is the three-dimensional arrangement in space. The simplest ones we run into, of course, are the geometric ice. And we've talked about the case of the tetraamine dichlorocobalt-3, where you, in fact, have two possibilities. You can either have the chlorines in side-by-side -side positions, or you can have them on opposite sides of the octahedron giving us cis-trans possibilities. Another possibility we see in triamine trichloride iridium-3. In this case, we have three chlorines. And again, we have possibilities. Either all three of the chlorines can end up side by side, in which case they're covering one of the faces of the octahedron, or they can all end up in a line, one next to the other. And in this case, this is known as a meridian arrangement. So we have facial and meridian arrangements, isomers, for these two compounds. The other kind of stereoisomer we run into are optical isomers. And optical isomers are a bit more complicated to understand. We talk about chiral compounds. Chiral meaning handedness. If you look at your two hands, you can bring them together palm to palm and everything seems to line up. To a first approximation, your two hands are identical. They don't correspond exactly. But if you take your two hands 
and point the palms in the same direction, you can't get anything to interpose, interpose at all. Everything's different. Nothing will line up correctly. And this is what we're talking about. Your hands are mirror images, but you can't line them up so that one imposes on the other one. And that's the requirement for optical isomers, non-superimposable mirror images. If you've taken organic chemistry, you've probably run into optically active compounds. They're important in organic chemistry, and the organic chemists have their approach to them. The inorganic chemists also have an approach to them, but it's somewhat different than what you see in the organic. For example, you can make the compound trisethylenediamine cobalt 3 chloride, and it includes two complexes of the ethylene, three ethylene diamines each occupy two sites in the cobalt's coordination sphere. Because the carbon chain is kind of short in ethylene diamine, those two sites have to be in adjacent positions on the cobalt's octahedron. And so we get these two. Now just looking at those two, they might look like they're the same, or that they should be the same, but they're actually not. We can look at them in three dimensions and see we get this kind of pinwheel effect. The chains of the two nitrogen, connecting the two nitrogens gives us a propeller or pinwheel kind of arrangement. And you can see these two species are in fact mirror images of each other. If we turn the second one around and try and line it up on the first one, we immediately run into a problem. Well, we can get one of the loops to correspond, the other two loops clearly do not. And the fact is, it wouldn't matter which loop we pick, the other two would simply not line up. And so we have a case of non-superimposable mirror image from these complexes. In a fundamental sense, these are in fact the same compound, the same material. And as far as their chemical properties go, they would all be almost identical except for the fact that the optical isomers rotate plane polarized light in a different direction. And that might seem kind of trivial as for a property, just rotating plane polarized light, but the fact is that when it comes to reactivity, the chirality of compounds can be very significant. In your body, it is highly important that you have the right isomers. And that concludes today's lecture on coordination chemistry. Have a nice day.